Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. حلقة اليوم ستقدم باللغة الإنجليزية مع ترجمة إلى اللغات العربية والأولاسية المعروفة كذلك بالفيتنامية البلغارية الصينية الكرواتية التشيكية الإنجليزية الفرنسية الألمانية الهندية الهنغارية الأندونيسية الإيطالية اليابانية الكورية الميلايوية المنغورية الفارسية البولندية البرتغالية البنجابية الرومانية الروسية الإسبانية والتايلندية أهلا ومرحبا مشاهدين الأعزاء اسمي أثير من السويداء في سوريا الموغلة في القدم يقال أن سوريا هي واحد من أقدم الحضارات الباقية في التاريخ البشري وتعد العاصمة دمشق أقدم مدينة مأهولة في العالم بوصفها مهد الحضارة سوريا صاحبة تاريخ حي متعدد الجوانب ومتنوع الأوجه بوقوعها على مفرق الطرق بين الشرق الأوسط وآسيا ومنطقة البحر الأبيض المتوسط وأوروبا العديد من الديانات والثقافات تركت بصمتها في سوريا بالرغم من أنها تعتبر عموما دولة عربية عوامل عديدة ومتنوعة قد لعبت دورا في صياغة نسيج المجتمع السوري كأرض عريقة تردد صدى أصوات عظيمة زاخرة بالحكمة تعتبر سوريا صاحبة إرث فلسفي فريد ومتنوع يشرفنا أن نتشادر وإياكم لوحة تاريخية من إرث سوريا التاريخي الشعب السوري المحترم يتمنى أن تنعموا بالمحبة اللامشروطة والمجد الإلهي سنقدم لكم اليوم حلقة بعنوان قصص بوذية قصة السايد سو الجزء الثاني المزيد من اللغات متوفرة على الإنترنت للغتك يرجى زيارة www.supremastertv.com على مدى أكثر من ثلاثة عقود من فكت كبيرة المعلمين تشينغ هاي تنير درب عالمنا من خلال تعاليمها الإلهية كمعلم حقيقي تمنح المعلمة طريقة لكوانيا في التأمل لأولئك التواقين لاكتشاف طبيعة الله داخلهم وتحقيق التحرر الأزلي من دوامة الحياة الموت خلال حياتهم طريقة لكوانيا مورست من قبل سائر المعلمين المستنيرين أمثال بوذا ويسوع المسيح والنبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والجورو نانك إنها تؤكد أنه بذكر الحثيث لله والتضحية من أجل الآخرين وعد امتهاك القوانين الكونية سنصل لأعلى مرتبة يمكن أن يبلغها بشر وندرك الهدف من وجودنا على هذا الأرض كبيرة المعلمين تشينغ هاي هي مثال حي واستثناء إلى الرحمة فهي تقوم بانتظام بتقديم المساعدات العينية والمالية فضلا عن المحبة للاجئين والمشردين والمتضررين من الكوارث الطبيعية وسواهم ممن يحتاجون للغوث في عام 2006 نالت المعلمة جائزة جوسي للسلام وهي تضاهي جائزة نوبل للسلام في الشرق وقد كرمت على مر السنين بمنحها العديد من الجوائز وأوسمت الشرف تقديرا لأعمالها الخيرية والإنسانية المتميزة وكصوت حقيقي يدافع عن أصدقائنا الحيوانات الجميلة تشجع المعلمة على اتباع النظام الغذاء النباتي المفعم بالمحبة والسلام الذي من شأنه إيقاد الوعي الإنساني لمدى قدسية الحياة بكافة أشكالها وصولا إلى عالم مجيد تعمه النباتية ويسوده التناغم حيث الحيوانات والبشر يعيشون في وئام إن مبادراتها لنشر النهج النباتي متنوعة وتشمل توزيع نشرات العيش البديل وسلسلة مطاعم لافينغ هات النباتية وتلفزيون كبيرة المعلمين بالإضافة إلى مكالمة الحكومات وكبريات وسائل الأعلام والمشاركة في مؤتمرات عبر دائرة تلفزيونية مغلقة بشأن تغير المناخ علمنا بذلك أم لم نعلم 
إن لجهودها تأثير هائل على الوعي العالمي فيما يخص الإحسان للحيوانات وكيف أن نمط الحياة هذا يمكن أن يحقق السلام الدائم بين الدول إضافة لإنقاذ كوكبنا من آثار تغير المناخ الكارثية على مر السنين جابت كبيرة المعلمين شينغهاي العالم من الأمريكيتين إلى إفريقيا ومن أوروبا إلى أوقيانوسيا وألقت مئات المحاضرات أمام الجمهور وتلاميذها متناولة باقة متنوعة من الموضوعات الروحية يشرفنا اليوم أن نقدم واحدة من هذه المحاضرات العميقة بعنوان قصص بوذية قصة السالسو الجزء الثاني ضمن سلسلة بين المعلمة والتلاميذ والتي ألقيت باللغة الإنجليزية يوم 16 آب 2015 بفرنسا Okay, so um, the Buddha say long, 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 long time ago, also in the same earth here, same planet, uh, there were two, there were four rivers, uh, uh, four rivers, only four rivers. We have many rivers now. Probably river keep coming, eh? At that time, you know, long, 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 long aeons ago, only there were four rivers, and two. Uh, king of the great uh, two great country big countries mm. one of the king named baladeva mean brahman uh, brahman like a brahman king in the third level okay and the other one oh okay okay this one uh how you say this one like a possessed, possessed or take over three rivers Three big rivers, yeah. Uh, his country is very rich. Uh, hum- all his citizens enjoy prosperities, but for for military for military uh, part, they are weak. They don't have a great army. Yeah, and not good training. The other one, the other king, uh, is the name is like a diamond. Okay, just a diamond, yeah. So we call him Brahman and Diamond. Easy, okay? Yeah. Uh, this this one has only one river. Yeah. Uh, his country has a little uh, less citizens, but his army is superb. Yeah, very professional, well trained, and strong. One day, uh, the Diamond King was thinking first to himself, "Ah, my army is so strong. <laughs> Can read, it's just with this is much better. Oh. Mm. I forgot to wash it today. Have to wash your glass daily even. Everything is work. <laughs> and it helps it's extra work as well. Oh never mind, never mind, whatever. My army is very strong. But we have only one river and the water is kind of uh short. Yeah, shortage of water. Uh, the other king, Brahman, uh, the army, uh, King Brahman's army is weak. But he took three rivers. Mm. I think I have to ask somebody, you know, subordinate, to go over there and ask him for one river, return one river to us. Yeah. If he give us one river, then we become his friend. Yeah. And uh, if I have something nice, I will make offer to him and share it with him, means share it with him. And if he has some trouble, I will bring my army there to protect him and help him, his country. But otherwise... <laughs> I will bring my army there and take the river. Yeah. 
After he thought like that, I asked all his uh, big officials come in, talk about national affair. After the meeting, he uh, wrote a letter, sent his uh, messenger to the king Brahman as, you know, as planned. After the Brahman king uh, read the letter, he was thinking, uh, these countries, you know, mountains, rivers, earth, the whole countries, I inherited from my ancestor. I have not even, it's not like I have taken it from him. Hmm. Why does he think that I have to return it to him? And then he said to the messenger of the other king, he said, this country, everything in it, is not that I made it, yeah, or I taken it from anywhere, it's from my ancestors, you know, uh, how you say, passing down to me, yeah. How, why, there's no reason why I have to return it to your king. Hmm? This is very illogical, yeah. If, uh, if your, your king want to bring the army here and uh, making war, then I'm also ready. <laughs> and the messenger came home and told his king whatever he had heard like that. And the Diamond King, of course, you know, angry, brought all his army to the neighbor country and uh, making war. He should read our flyer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Be vegan, make peace, right? <laughs> yeah, this king, he did not got your flyer. You should have given him one. Huh? <laughs> or open a Loving Hood restaurant next to his palace. <laughs> Every day let him watch SMTV, record it, you know? <laughs> All right, my God, yeah. <sighs> of course, the army of the King Brahman lost, you know. They scattered everywhere, frightened and scared and run away. At that time, uh, taking this opportunity, the King, the king uh, Diamond's army, you know, just go straight to the capital and surrounding the king's uh, palace, the Brahman king's palace. Yeah. At that time, even the army or the bodyguards or who, all the soldiers that are taking care and protect the king's palace also very frightened, knowing that that uh, army of uh, diamond king is very strong, so they don't dare to go out to fight. <sighs> The king Brahman's uh, court officials saw this very dangerous situation, so came up and tell the king. What happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> no okay. translation? Saying okay to translation to you. It's good now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your Majesty, the court officials tell him. Oh, the army is very, very mighty. Yeah. Uh, our army is, is very weak. So the other uh, court official told him that uh, the king's diamond army is very strong and our army is very big, uh, very weak. Why are you so attached to one river and then uh, uh, causing suffering to all the citizens in our country, yes. And maybe you could, could even lose our, your country altogether. Uh, so please, just give the river to them, return the river to them, and then we have even better, maybe better relationship, better, yes. So the king, okay, yeah, he asked, he dispatched somebody to come out and talk with the Diamond King, okay, Your Majesty, my king, accept your request before. 
from your majesty, we will return one river for you. And then also we offer you one beautiful girl. And from now on, uh, the two countries will offer each other whatever rare and good, you know, in a friendship. And when uh, each of our country have problem or danger, then we will support and help each other, yeah, in different ways. So, okay. Then the Diamond King, you know, withdrew. And then uh, he t took this woman home to uh, marry and make become his wife. After a while, this... Uh, Lady, you know, the queen uh, give birth to. Oh, not yet, not yet. Okay. She was pregnant, yeah. And during her pregnancies, wherever she goes, there is a canopy, you know, with uh, all kind of uh, precious stone, you know, precious jewels, always carry, uh, um, how you say, Protecting her from from uh, from above, always it's just flying on top of her head. Wherever she go, the canopy, the precious canopy, always follow her. Doesn't matter if she stand up, she walks, she sit, or she lay down. Always that uh, canopy, precious canopy, on her head. When she gave birth to a son, this son body is like golden. Gold, gold, like gold, yeah. His hair is beautiful and strong and glad. You know, very beautiful, shining hair. And uh, even he has uh, some kind of uh, light, you know, emitting from his body, yeah. And after she gave birth to this son, the canopy went to the sun <laughs> instead. So. Whether he go or stand or sit or lay down, the canopy always follow him. So that was the canopy for the sun in the in the in the in the fetus form already, not for the mother. <laughs> All right. Ah, the king asked uh, many astrologer came in, yeah, to uh, see the future of his prince. So everybody come and praise him, praise him, and say, "Oh, your Majesty, this is precious, precious." Yeah, the prince has all kind of uh, auspicious mark of a human, uh, as well as all this uh, merit. You know, in this world, no one can compare with him. He's unique. <coughs> So, of course, the king and the queen was very, very happy and then asked them to please choose an uh, auspicious and suitable name for him. And then, uh, in the, uh, according to ancient tradition, yeah, tradition of old, okay, meaning ancient tradition, uh, if you want to give, or give name to the, the child, you have to <coughs> rely on two things. One is something, some auspicious sign or some auspicious omens that appear, and also relying on the the stars. Yeah. So the the uh, astrologer tell tell him, tell the king, Your Majesty, uh, when the queen. Is, was pregnant, is there any auspicious sign or omen? So the <clears throat> king said, yeah, when she was pregnant, there was always a canopy <laughs> surrounding, uh, following her everywhere. Yeah. And that canopy was made of seven precious um, you know, materials, you know, like diamonds or precious stones and gold. And, you know, platinum, things, things like that, okay? So, the astrologer say, Your Majesty, uh, according to that, uh, we will uh, name him Salayala, means, uh, I don't know what means, <laughs> probably 
probably like uh, probably the name is um, the guy, like what is that canopy? You know? Yeah, canopy. All right. Uh, when the prince grown up, the 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 king died. After burying the king, of course the prince, you know, uh, became king. Yeah. Uh, after several years, uh, stabilized everything and learning and arranging all the uh, court court affair. He went out often to check out on the on the on the, the citizens whether they are happy or not. Is there anything he can do? Mostly he go to the rural areas. He doesn't stay in the capital. <clears throat> when he come outside, <clears throat> one day he saw that uh, the 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 sun was so hot, so hot, and all the farmer has to take off their clothes, and and all the sun was burning their skin. It's too hot, too hot. Yeah, and then uh, the buffalo was trying so hard to plow the field together with that. Yeah. And it is very difficult because it's muddy, you know, and men and beasts were very, very uh, working very hard, too hard for his liking. Yeah. So the king asked, you know, the new king, yeah? the new king asked uh, his uh, subordinate, "What are these people doing? Why it looks so difficult? Yeah, and and hard work." So they say, Your Majesty, yeah, you know, uh, every country is uh, rely uh, based on based on the citizens, yeah. And the citizens are the main, the main like a backbone of the country, yes. And then the back, these citizens, they rely on uh, cereals to to live, yeah. If they don't work hard like that, they cannot eat, they cannot have food and vegetable. Mm? They will become poor, hungry. If they are poor and hungry, then the country will be in danger. So the king said, <sighs> he, said his, he talked to the, the space, you know, to some to whomever he, he believed in, maybe Buddha, kings of God or heaven, he said, if my, uh, if my merit is sufficient to be this, the king of this country, then please let my citizens have sufficient food to eat, to live, no need to plow the field and so, suffering so much like that. After he Ask like that, and then suddenly everybody in the house have enough food to eat, enough <laughs> rice and other things they need. Yeah, okay. Mm. Whatever they want, they will have. You know, there, there are different kind of cereals and rice. Whatever they wish to have, then they will have that. Yes. Not just that like everybody same. No, <laughs> you know, whatever they wish they have. Yeah. Some like uh, sticky rice. You know. Some like. Uh, Perfume rice, some like a normal Latin American rice, something like that. Different rice, some like black rice. Then these all come to their house according to their request. Inside, you know, inside their heart. Yeah. After a while longer, he came out again, second time to the outside of the city. And then he saw his citizen. Uh, have to go to to chop the trees to make wood to pasto the rice you know and to uh, go and uh, carry water home it's uh, uh, they are sweating and they are walking and they are very tired look like tiring yeah it seems hard work so the king asked his citizen uh, his uh, court officials what are they doing why do they work so hard and look like they're suffering? So they say, Your Majesty, mm. 
our citizens uh, rely on your blessing, uh, have uh, rice and things come to their house. And naturally, they don't have to plow the field or plant the rice. But they have to still to pesto, you know, the rice in order to uh, peel off the outer heart, the hard outer cover of the rice. So that they, after that, then they can cook to eat. Yeah. And then they have to go and find the wood to cook it. Yeah. And they also need to bring water, you know, to cook for the rice and other vegetables. Therefore, uh, they still have to work somehow. Mm. So the kings say again <laughs> to the space, if my merit is great enough that I become king of this country, then please let my uh, citizen, whatever they want to eat, the food will just appear. So they don't have to do anything else, just eat. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> Any of the king around here, please? Huh? <laughs> so, ah, after that, truly, everybody just uh, wants something to eat, then it comes right away in front of them. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to cook. They don't have to find anything so hard like before. After a long time, he came out again to the rural area, check out on his citizens. And then he saw that some of the poor citizens have to uh, weave, you know, have to uh, weave the thread from cotton and then uh, have to uh, uh, sew the clothes and all that, you know. Their, their backs are bending, bending, and they have backache and all that. Day and night sometimes they work very hard because they're poor. How can anybody be poor if their food just comes to their house? Oh, poor, poor, meaning no money to buy clothes, I guess. Have food, but no clothes. Okay, I got it, I got it. <laughs> okay, so the king asked again his uh, court officials, what are they doing? It's take, seems to take a long time and that they are uh, working so hard. So the court official, Official reply again. You know, right? Ah, excuse me. Okay. Ah, the king, uh, the court officer say, ah, yeah. Due to your blessing, uh, all the citizens have food to eat all the time. But now they have to weave uh, cloth in order to make clothes to wear. So the king say again, if my merit is. Uh, great enough that I can become the king of this country, then please let all my citizens uh, have anything, have any clothes they, they, they need, yeah? That all the trees, all the trees will bear the clothes for all my citizens. All kind of color, red, yellow, <laughs> uh, blue, white, uh, according to their wish, okay? After that, yeah, they have it. All the people have clothes to wear, they're hanging on the trees. <laughs> you wish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have clothes are hanging in the, in the uh, grocery, you know, in the corner. We have food also hanging in there. <laughs> we have food hanging in the kitchen, yeah. <laughs> At that time, a uh, long time after that, he came out, he went out. Oh, I look clean, right? It's not too, not too bad for your eyes, no? <laughs> okay. After a long time, he came out again. He went out again to the outside of the city. You must know that at that time, king or great uh, noble people, you know, royal people, they normally built their own city, yeah, higher above others, and then surrounding there will be a wall, you know, and then uh, citizens come in and out according to the time they open the gates, yeah, okay. But mostly the, the the people who live inside the the walls of the capital or their citadel, 
are richer people, understand? So can afford to stay inside or the worker for the kings. So of course they have everything. Yeah? They are not poor like the people outside, some of the people outside in the rural area. So even those, there, therefore you ask, how come the king never saw this before? He couldn't if he stayed inside his capital, because people in capital are rich, well off, has everything. And then whatever they want, the people will bring in to sell to them, because they're rich and they are uh, kings, officials, or shoulders, everything are taken care of inside that city. Hmm? So he did not know that outside is a different life. Yeah? Hmm. <coughs> uh, long time after that, he went out to the outside of his uh, capital wall and he saw uh, people uh, uh, making, uh, making uh, all kind of like uh, music sheets or music instruments. Yeah. So the king asked again. <laughs> What are they doing, these people? Mm. So they said, Your Majesty, all our citizens, uh, because of your blessing, we have uh, enough food, we have enough clothing, everything. And now they have not much to do, so everybody tried to make music instruments and so that they can sing and dance together. Yeah, so that they're happy. <coughs> Again, the king said, my God, just to make a guitar, how difficult can that be? Huh? A guitar or a mandolin or whatever, yeah? Well, the king still don't like it. Yeah, he said, he said to <laughs> heaven, he said, if my merit is good enough and truly that I have to be the king, I, I could be king of this country, then uh, let uh, all the trees bear all these instruments of music so that all my citizens enjoy whatever they like, yeah, and play whatever instrument they, they choose to play. Okay, all the trees on earth in that country bore a lot of musical instruments for everybody, okay? Yeah. Uh, so long after he went out again, <laughs> checking, checking. Mm. Oh no, sorry, he didn't win out again. <laughs> because they said, after a long time, I thought I thought continue going out, but he didn't. Uh, many <coughs> of uh, this, uh, many of the court officials came and uh, pay obeisance to the king. Mm. In his palace, uh, when the meal time comes, so he asked them to stay to have meals with him. And then uh, at that time, all the officials had a chance to enjoy uh, the beautiful food from the king's palace. Yeah. He, they eat a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. He, as if they have never had this thing before. Probably they never had. You know, king's food probably has some more uh, delicacy from different countries, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like normal food, yeah. Maybe he has many different chefs cook different meals. It's not like a citizen outside. Maybe it's just one butler or something, probably have many, yeah. Oh, after he, they eat all that, they feel, I never had such wonderful food. And after he ate them, they feel, after eating them, they feel their body stronger, full of energies, and very happy indeed. So all of them said to the king, Majesty, our house has never such beautiful, tasty food like this. After eating, we feel stronger, you know, energetic, and uh, also very peaceful and strong, strong and peaceful. And the king said, uh, if you want to have such a meal like this, similar every day, then you just uh, eat the same time as I eat in your house. Then you will have the same food. Yeah. Uh, so even then after that, he posted notes everywhere to all the citizens about the time that he eat. 
<laughs> so the citizen can have the same food as he does. Yeah. Because when before he's eating, the 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 palace will uh, drum, you know, uh, make uh, make like uh, say uh, uh, communication <laughs> with drum. Everybody know that this is the time the king's going to eat, and then they're going to eat the same time. So all the citizens enjoy the same del delicious, uh, rare food like the king. Mm. Now. The Brahman king, you know, remember the other one with three rivers? Yeah, he uh, sent a messenger to this um, uh, canopy king and asked, say to him, when your father was alive, I gave him one river, and now your father died, return that river to me. What for he need three river if if two rivers is sufficient, right? I guess they don't need any more. Huh? Yeah. So the canopy king said to the messenger, uh, this country, whatever in it, I have not come and forced your king to give it to me. Hmm? But because I am the king of this country, I don't want my citizen to suffer. Uh, but this is a small thing, small matter. A, a river for him is just a small matter. I guess he don't need it. You know, the food come by itself, the clothes come by itself, right? Yeah, e even a music, a guitar, and <laughs> a pi uh, say, a piano come by itself. What for he need anything? So, but that's a small thing. Uh, just a delay for a while. After I and your king saw each other, uh, we will talk about something more important. Yeah. Between our two countries. Yeah. So the the messenger came back and told his king, the Brahman king, thus. So Brahman king agree. You know, make an appointment. Uh, they will see each other, the two kings. Okay. At that time, both of the king brought the, their armies to the uh, to the border, border river. Yeah, both on both sides of the river. We are the border of the two countries. And then they both went into the boat, ship, uh, meet each other in the middle of the the river. My God, they still have border. They already have border at that time. Cha cha cha. Yeah, <clears throat> and the Brahman king saw that the the, uh, the the cannibal king body was so distinguished and brightened as if sun was shining from inside. Yeah, and his uh, hair so shining as crystal, like crystal, and his uh, eyes are Brighten like the stars, you know. Mm. Uh, and his uh, mouth is is like flower, beautiful. Yeah, his nose very straight. Yeah, uh, his uh, face is square. Uh, I I don't have that face. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> What happens if a woman have a square face? <laughs> Is good? Yes or no? No. Mm, okay, then I can't be a king, right? All right then. Okay, okay. Uh, and his ears is very proportionate. If and his manner is very very dignified, powerful, but. Very, very proper. Yeah. So he suddenly became very respectful of this uh, cannibal king. Yeah. And then he was thinking. He was thinking this uh, this king is almost like the Brahman god. Yeah. And then I'm also Brahman, so we both <laughs> meet each other here to talk about uh, <laughs> about other things. Yeah. 
And uh, the canopy king said, my citizens have all kind of food and clothing and everything. They don't have to work and they don't even have to, uh, how you say, pay tax or anything like that. Yes. I never ask my citizen to work for me either, uh, anyway, yes. They are saying like that. And after they were, before, uh, while they were talking, it's a time for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> because it's time to eat. And then he, the, the shoulders of the um, uh, canopy king was uh, beating the drum very loud and strong. You know, just tell, tell citizen to eat, you know that? But the Brahman king was scared. He was thinking they're going to catch him and to kill him. He was uh, trampling, trampling. Yeah, he was stand. And then he stood up, apologized. <laughs> His whole body is <laughs> shaking. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> the canopy king stood up, you know, uh, catch hold of him and tell him, please sit down. Yeah, why are you so scared? Is this now is a meal time? So my army, you know, everywhere making drums so the people know uh, to eat together at the same time with me, so they have uh, delicacies and rare food. Oh, so the King Brahman uh, put his palm together. Mm. <sighs> Please <laughs> be merciful. Can you also help that my citizen, you know, enjoy the same privilege like yours? Of course, yeah, of course. And since then, other country also come and you know ask the same food and blah 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 blah. And from then on, the canopy king ruled the whole universe. <laughs> this you know earth universe, yeah. Uh, After that, after he became a great emperor, you know, everyone, uh, all the court officials, of course, more in number, and they take turn, yeah, to uh, to wait on him, wait for him in case he wants anything, because there's more more work to do now, more people, no, more citizens, more country, more work, so they all take turn to wait in the court day and night, 24 hours, so that the king, whatever the king needs, you know, maybe they will be able to do it right away. Mm. One day in the morning, early in the morning, uh, the sun had just raised. Mm. There was <clears throat> a chariot uh, from jewels, you know, sparkling, came in, come from the east. The king uh, canopy walked down from his throne <coughs> and he uh, kneeled down, but he put his hand up to catch the, uh, the chariot, the, the, the flying chariot from the sky. And then the chariot stopped in front of him and with all kind of jewels and light coming out of the chariot. Mm. And the king uh, vow again, you know, or talk to the sky again. If my merit is to be the wheel turning king, then this chariot should stay here. Yeah, he just wants to know for sure that this is for him or not. Okay? Yeah. And then, of course, that chariot stay there, you know, not on the ground, but stay in, in, the, in the air, right in front of his palace. And then uh, many, mm -mm, and then many others, a precious thing coming, you know, like the elephant, uh, the, the good elephant, you know, and then the divas, and the fairy from heavens, 
and all kind of uh, uh, heavenly beings and uh, whatever, you know, for the dignity of the king, they all came after that, yeah, one by one. After that, uh, the king became a uh, uh, wheel-turning king. You understand, I told you already about wheel-turning king. It's like diva king on earth. It's different than other kings, okay? And then he, uh, he rules the whole planet, and everyone is happy at that time. They are happy, have enough, sufficient food and clothing, everyone, and very content. According to the king's um, policy and rules, the citizen has to practice the ten, ten good deeds, okay? Like first the five precepts and extra, no? like not killing, not stealing, uh, not uh, illicit sex, not lying, not uh, two faces, uh, not uh, saying uh, wicked things, and not uh, um, exaggerate things, not telling exaggerate things which is not uh, hundred percent truth, you know, like uh, making story more than it is to making trouble between two people. Mm. No greedy, mm. no uh, violent, you know, no uh, fighting with each other, fighty, you know, argumentative like that. No. No argue each other. Can discuss, but no argue. And uh, the ten is no uh, ignorance. <laughs> no, I mean, in no, not really ignorant. No addictive, you know? Yeah. Like too much indulgent in things like playing cards or gambling, you know. Do not be like attached to all kind of things that is not proper. Yeah. yeah okay. Or like don't drink alcohol and stuff like that. Hmm? Okay. After all of them die, any of the citizens die, they are born in heaven. Hmm. <sighs> After saying all this, the Buddha remind everybody. Anan. You should know, the king cannot be at that time. Who, who can that be? <laughs> it was I, the Buddha. Yeah. It was I, the, one of my incarnations. Yeah. <clears throat> and the diamond king at that time is my father now. Yeah. And the queen who gave birth to me is Maya, my mother, in this lifetime. Because I had such a loving compassion for my citizens, I always often give in my things, my my possession, yes, even my uh, even precious teaching, you know, good teaching. So I I lead them into the right way. Because of that reason, today. One of this is one of the reason I today became a Buddha, the highest in all these three world. I don't know why. Uh, three world mean heavens, earth, uh, heaven, human, and earth. Understand? Yeah. And no one can compare to me at this time. Yeah. Because of that, also. Mm, because of that, uh, that all beings at that time and now, mm. they practice good ways and they will benefit, be born in heaven or be born in a favorable situation on earth. Yeah. So I asked the, Anna, I asked the Buddha again, meaning Anan, ask, mm, obeisance to the world, honor one. Uh, can we don't know what what kind of merit did the did the canopy king has done to become the wheel steering wheel steering king at that time yes and how come that even though he 
he was still in the mother's womb, he already had the canopy covering him, protecting him. Please, can you tell us? Oh, God, that is a long story. <laughs> It's not a story, you see. No, no, it's not long. It's good, it's good. Are you sleeping yet? Can you follow me at all? نشكركم على حضوركم حلقة اليوم قصص بوذية قصة سايسو الجزء الثاني ضمن سلسلة بين المعلمة والتلاميذ التالي طريقة ساو داي المقدس إلى الحياة الخالدة الفصل الثاني ضمن سلسلة كلمات من الحكمة الرجاء أن ابقوا معنا على تلفزيون كبيرة المعلمين عسى أن تنعم حياتكم أبدا بمحبة الله اللامتناهية للمزيد من التفاصيل يرجى زيارة www.supremastertv.com/bmd